We are live. Hey, everybody. Hi. Welcome to What Happened This Month, the Enoch Pratt Free Library's current events quiz. I'm your host, Paula Willey. I work at the Orlean Street branch where I help people find information and resources every day. We've put together five multiple choice questions about what's been happening in the world. How will you do? It's been a while since we've joined you for a quiz and it's been quite a year, hasn't it? We started the year with a violent attack by US citizens on our nation's capital and we ended it with yet another round of coronavirus that left many families isolating in their homes again. But let's start our quiz with what else coronavirus? Sure, now in its third year, this contagious respiratory virus is still not under control in part because viruses like other living organisms evolve and mutate. But there is some good news coming our way. And that's our first question. What's the good news about coronavirus? Is it A, Corona kills cockroaches? Is it B, the vaccine will likely be approved for children under five sooner than we expected? Or is it C, the next variant after Omicron will be named Pi and its symptoms will include flaky crust and sweet filling? You know who else is experiencing a COVID epidemic? Deer. I just read a study where they tested deer and something like 87% of them came back positive. They don't tend to develop symptoms, which is why you don't see them laying around in the park sneezing all day. <laughs> all right, on to question two. Meet Jin Schofield and Sarvnaz Ale Mohammed, two friends who got inspired to invent something cool while they were stuck at home distance learning. They designed a bracelet that uses a camera and a tiny computer to translate American Sign Language, often called ASL, into spoken English. ASL allows people to use hand movements and facial expressions to communicate without speaking. The inventors used 30,000 images of ASL hand gestures to build the software for their translator, which they call the conch shell bracelet. In order to build the skills they needed, they did an online eight week machine learning course designed by Stanford University. They also set up phone calls with local university professors who directed them to more resources and since neither of the girls are members of the deaf community, they did online research into what inventions were already out there and talked to people they knew who used ASL to ask them what they would like to see in a sign language translator. That is a very thoughtful uh, 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 skill building. So here's my question. These young people who are, inve are inventing a computer that translates ASL to spoken word, but who invented ASL? Was it A, Coco the Gorilla? B, Helen Keller, C, Sesame Street, or D, Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet. Did you know that just like spoken uh, language, there are lots of sign languages? There are an estimated 300 sign languages currently spoken by deaf and hearing people. All right, on to our next question. Speaking of young people doing extraordinary things, here's 19-year-old Jack Sweeney. Jack enjoys coding and airplanes, and he has recently been in the news for putting these hobbies together to track the private jet of billionaire Elon Musk. <sighs> there it goes. Jack created a bot that follows the unique identifier code associated with the airplane and posts its movements on Twitter. <laughs> it's perfectly legal, but not surprisingly, Elon Musk doesn't like it. My question for you, how much did the billionaire offer the kid to stop posting the movements of his private jet? Did he offer him $5,000? Did he offer him $50,000? Did he offer him $500,000? Or did Elon Musk offer Jack Sweeney a cool $5 million to quit following him around the, around the world? Jack has also created bots that follow jets owned by Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates, Amazon's Jeff Bezos, and Drake. He says he thinks Drake's jet, jet is the coolest. It probably definitely goes to the coolest places. So question four, let's check on the weather. Here's a live view of Baltimore Harbor that we are accessing through earthcam.com. Let's see if it's going to come up. We're straining the internet today. All right, my backup live cam is of 
the penguin enclosure at the Baltimore Zoo. This is also a live webcam. And we see no penguins, but a couple of seagulls sitting around on a gray and gloomy day. Oh. That is typical Baltimore February weather. But last week, the Baltimore area narrowly avoided a big storm that stomped most of the way across the country, leaving 300,000 people without power due to snow and freezing rain. Winter storm Landon dropped a widespread mess of snow, sleet, and freezing rain from the Rocky Mountains all the way to the Northeast last week. The storm caused traffic pileups, knocked out power, and caused damage to trees. Sometimes it's hard to imagine that something as light and fluffy as a snowflake can cause damage to buildings and power lines. Well, as it turns out, most snowflakes are not these lacy round crystals. Most snowflakes are lumpy clumps of many individual ice crystals as well as frozen water droplets. So here's your question. How big was the biggest snowflake ever recorded? Was it A, six inches, about yay big? B, 1.35 miles? C, nine millimeters, about that big? Or D, 15 inches? As snowflakes fall through the air, they bump into each other, and depending on the amount of moisture in the air and whether it's windy or calm, they can stick to, to each other and fall to the ground as the fluffy wads of snow that we usually see in Baltimore. And for our last news question, it's Black History Month, and I can think of no better way to celebrate than to honor a great American artist and storyteller who passed this week at the age of 98. Ashley Bryan was a puppeteer, a painter, a sculptor, Friends described him as always making something, always reciting poetry, always telling stories. Ashley Bryan won a Newbery honor for this book, this book, Freedom Over Me, in which he paints portraits of 11 slaves whose names he found in a plantation document from 1828. He imagines their lives and their dreams in poetry. In fact, Ashley Bryan won countless awards in his lifetime. Many of his books received a particular award for books for children and young adults that demonstrate an appreciation of African-American culture and universal human values. Here's my question. For which notable Black American is this award named? Was it named for Dorothy Height? I'm sorry. Dorothy Height? Coretta Scott King? Claudette Colvin or Ruby Bridges? Here's your four choices. Ashley Bryant was passionate about making poetry come alive and educating young and old of every ethnic background about the legacy of African and African-American culture. All right, those are our questions. Here's some answers. According, I asked you, what's the good news in coronavirus news? And according to the Washington Post, coronavirus vaccines for children younger than five could be available sooner than expected, perhaps by the end of February. This will be a two-shot dose and would be for children aged three months to five years. Kids under five are the least vulnerable to COVID, according to the World Health Organization. Little kids are less likely to get it, and if they do, it typically causes less severe illness and fewer deaths. Um, less than 0.1% of global deaths have been children under five years of age. That means 1,902 as of December, but that's 1,902 too many. So let's get those little kids vaccinated. As for animals, COVID doesn't kill cockroaches, no. But according to a study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science, COVID infections have turned up in cats, dogs, lions, tigers, pumas, dolphins, hippos, hamsters, and others. Not insects though. And the next variant after of COVID after Omicron will indeed be pi. The variants are named after letters of the Greek alphabet. Pi is the letter that looks kind of like a table, while Omicron is the one that looks kind of like a pie. Now you know why we don't use that alphabet in English. All right, second answer. Much like the English language, tracing the invention of sign language in general is impossible. What probably started as a lot of pointing and gestures has evolved into hundreds of varieties of a rich and expressive language.
but American Sign Language, or ASL, was developed in the 1800s by Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet. Inspired by a desire to help his uh, neighbor's deaf daughter, Gallaudet went to Europe to meet with Laurent Clerc, a deaf instructor of sign language. Together, they founded the first American School for the Deaf and established a sign language unique to the United States. Gallaudet extended his school idea to Gallaudet University, the world's only university in which all programs and services are specifically designed to accommodate deaf and hard of hearing students. Gallaudet University, which has been around since 1864, is a bilingual, diverse, multicultural institution of higher education that ensures the intellectual and professional advancement of deaf and hard of hearing individuals through American Sign Language, ASL, and English. Gallaudet maintains a tradition of research and scholarly activity and prepares its graduates for career opportunities in a highly competitive technological and changing world. Gallaudet is primarily for deaf and hard of hearing students, but has always welcomed students who are bilingual and committed to learning in a signing environment. I don't know if Thomas Gallaudet imagined cheerleaders using ASL to hype up a crowd, but I hope he would be proud. Answer three, which brings us to the tale of the billionaire and the brilliant boy. Jack Sweeney used his computer know-how to track Elon Musk's jet and post its whereabouts on Twitter. He soon got a Twitter DM from the billionaire himself, offering him $5,000 if he'll take down the account. $5,000 isn't very much considering Elon Musk is worth almost $240 billion, with a B, dollars. So Jack asked for $50,000 to help him out with college tuition. He later said that if Musk didn't want to pay anything, he would delete the account in return for an internship, internship at Elon Musk's company. And that's when the billionaire blocked him. We can look at the data that Jack is using to track the private jets of millionaires and billionaires. It's a web page called FlightAware. It's right there online. And you can, this shows every plane that's in flight over the United States right now. And we can find the green stuff is weather and the little planies, you can see them moving. If we click on them, we'll get information about each one. Now, every plane on the planet has has to share information like this. It mostly keeps them from you know running into each other. But this one that we just clicked on uh, is coming from the Dominican Republic and going, I'm not sure where, going to JFK, going to New York City. Cool stuff, huh? That is real-time flight information. Okay. Biggest snowflake. Oh, there's unfollow. He had a little cranky pants fit. Biggest snowflake. The largest reported snowflake measured... 15 inches wide and eight inches thick. It was discovered by a ranch owner in Fort Keogh, Montana. Let's fool around with this online snowflake generator while I tell you about it. You can find this cool thing at www.transom.org slash maths slash activity. We see the snowflake on the right and the wedge shape on the left. We just take the green dots and move them around until we make different shapes of snowflake, right? Individual snowflakes are quite small, as you may have noticed, but sometimes they stick together and create a much larger snowflake. It is common to have big snowflakes sized around three to five centimeters, but on January 28th, 1887, the social soldiers guarding the army base of Fort Keogh, Montana, kept noticing exceptionally large snowflakes falling all day. Finally, they saw the most massive snowflake ever at 15 centimeters, uh, at 38 centimeters wide and 20 thick. This thing was the size of a dinner plate. All right, there's a cool snowflake generator for you to fool around with online. And back to our quiz, answer five. Oops. 
Answer five. In honor of author and artist Ashley Bryan, I ask you who the American Library Association's Award for Outstanding African American Authors and Illustrators of Books for Children that Demonstrate an Appreciation of African American Culture and Universal Human Values were named for. Did you get it? The answer is uh, Coretta Scott King. The award uh, commemorates the life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And, uh, and is named for his wife, Mrs. Coretta Scott King for her courage and determination to continue the work for peace and world brotherhood. This year's winner of the Coretta Scott King Award for both author and illustrator is Unspeakable, The Tulsa Race Massacre, written by Baltimore native uh, Carol Boston Weatherford and illustrated by Floyd Cooper, another wonderful visual storyteller who we lost this year. I encourage you to look for this book at your library along with the books of Ashley Bryan and books about Claudette Colvin and Ruby Bridges who were also civil rights heroes, as well as Dorothy Height. Baltimore, uh, we don't have a book, <laughs> we don't have a book about her, but we do have a school named after her, a brand new 21st century elementary school. Hey, that's our quiz. Thanks for playing. Before you go though, here with a message from Baltimore City Health Department, our teen vaccine ambassadors, Daniel Perrin and Camila Calero. What have you got for us, Daniel and Camila? Uh, Camelia, can you um, unmute, please? Oh, I'm so sorry to notice. Um, so welcome to Baltimore versus COVID quiz questions. Woo! Um, yeah, uh, so who are we? We are Value Baltimore. Um, we help a vaccine access and acceptance lives in unity, education, and engagement. And we are youth ambassadors, and we're aiming to educate and inform about COVID-19. Uh, we also want to give resources and information for everyone to have an opportunity to get vaccinated. All right, so today we have a couple other quiz questions for y'all, um, in addition to the quiz, the amazing quiz that you have, that everyone just did. Um, so the first question we have is, uh, what does the 19 in uh, COVID-19 stand for? So I'll give everyone a little bit of time, but uh, we will uh, move on. And the second question we have, uh, if you could go to the next slide, um, is true or false? There are multiple coronaviruses. So I'll give everyone, wherever they are, a little bit of time to think about it, and then we'll go back over the answers. <laughs> And yeah, while we're, while we're thinking about our answers, we can uh, go ahead and talk about how to stay safe from the coronavirus. So as we talked about in you know both quizzes, we are in the midst of a, of a pandemic, unfortunately, um, and the ways to stay safe and keep yourself safe as well as your families and grandparents and friends and all of the above is um, making sure that you wear a mask uh, at all times inside. Um, it really is the best way to stay safe. Um, you know, if you do end up testing positive or uh, think you might have symptoms uh, or you're, you're, not, you're not feeling quite right, really any of the above, um, it's really good to, to contact Trace. So anybody that you've seen uh, in the you know, last few days, however long uh, the period is recommended, um, you should reach out to and let them know that you're feeling what you're feeling and just so that we can stay ahead of this pandemic and, and make sure that everyone is aware. And then the biggest thing, which is really our job, is uh, to make sure go ahead and get vaccinated. Uh, vaccination is free, um, it's accessible, it's been proven to be safe uh, in uh, almost every group of people. And you know we have resources that uh, Camila will show you in a second for how to get access to the vaccine, but it is, uh, it's completely free, it's completely safe, and it is the best way to make sure that you don't get sick. Uh, well, you are still able to get the vac to get the disease uh, with the vaccination on board. You are, uh, you know, the odds that you are, that you, know, you end up sick or uh, in the hospital or, uh, you know, God forbid, dead are much lower, uh, much much lower than uh, anybody who's unvaccinated. Um, and so that's why getting the vaccine is incredibly important. Other things you can do uh, include uh, washing your hands frequently for for 20 or more seconds, um, you know, regularly throughout the day. Whether you're, you know touching various surfaces uh, or not, it's really important to, to wash your hands. Uh, when you're with your friends or uh, a family or anything like that, spread important information and make sure you're spreading information that is, uh, you know, been found to be true uh, and uh, not misinformation because we've, we've had a lot of misinformation about this pandemic and I think it's put a lot of lives at risk. 
um, taking a COVID test uh, if you feel sick or were exposed. So there are a couple places where COVID tests are free. Uh, those can be accessed on the Baltimore City Health Department website, which we'll give you, everyone access to in a little bit. Um, and then obviously, if you do end up testing positive or you have an exposure, uh, adhering to the correct amount of quarantine is really important to make sure that everyone uh, stays safe and we don't have to spread this any more than we have to, uh, and any more than, you know, at all. But again, the most important thing is to get vaccinated, uh, and that is the best thing you can do to keep you and your family safe. It's free, it's safe, uh, and we'll give you information in a little bit about how to get there. Now, if we could go back to the first two questions, um, then we will go over the answers. Um, so yes, what does the 19 and COVID-19 stand for? Uh, it stands uh, It stands for that it was founded in 2019. Um, this was a uh, this was a disease that was discovered in late 2019, um, and that is why uh, that is why the 19 is there um, to distinguish it from the other coronaviruses. Which takes us to our next question um, of whether or not it is true or false that there are multiple coronaviruses. And like I just said, it is true there are multiple coronaviruses. The coronavirus is a type of uh, respiratory disease uh, that you know, stems from other viral structures. Um, but again, the 19 in COVID-19 um, is just used to identify this specific uh, virus, which is the one that we are dealing with so heavily right now. Um, and that's why it's COVID-19. All right, you've heard enough of my voice. Now I'll let Camila talk and she will uh, go to the last slide and give you information. Um, so this is our QR code. Um, so if you scan it, it should send you to a place where you can see all the clinics. Um, you can see if uh, the clinics like that give first and second doses or clinics that give boosters. Um, I would like to say again that it is free and uh, very accessible now. Um, and most clinics offer for ages five and up and it's really easy and it like it's super fun to just like scan your phone and like um, see all the clinics you could go to. Yes, and now one more note, sorry, is that uh, we do have tests available at, um, at some, I don't know how many, but some uh, Enoch Pratt branches. I don't know if that's how you pronounce the Enoch Pratt. I think it is. Um, and so we highly recommend that you go out there and you know, get tests. And if you need tests to figure out your situation, those are those are excellent and can keep people safe. Yes, that's right. Thanks very much, Danielle and Camila. You can go on the Enoch Pratt Free Library's website, prattlibrary.org, and see a live uh, um, uh, see live numbers of which branches have uh, free test kits and how many. Same thing with masks. We're giving out packs of masks. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Go get vaccinated. All right, we've got one more little bit. Um, we're going to talk about um, sources, as always, on the news quiz. We recommend we get all of our information on authoritative sources, uh, and so should you. Thanks you for playing along. Thanks, Dan Danielle and Camila. Let's give the late loved Ashley Bryant the last word today. Now the poem by Langston Hughes, My People, by Langston Hughes. The night is beautiful, so the faces of my people. The stars are beautiful, so the eyes of my people. Beautiful also is the sun. Beautiful also are the souls of my people.